The end of Syndicate Season, a cross-out video by Dangerously Incompetent. Today's the last day of Syndicate Season. How far have I got? Well, I've gone through here and I've unlocked all these things and I've got all these structural parts and I've unlocked all the blueprints so I can make all the weapons and the cabins and the wheels. In fact, I've gone even further. I've got to level up 114. I haven't done much with the parts, and obviously you haven't seen any videos recently of me with Syndicate builds. I started messing around with Entemperos because I had an idea to make a Roman candle build, because you can orientate them so that they face upwards, and I was going to have a wedge on the front to lift people up and then wedge and then burn them, so I could do on the ground and all the hovers. But I played around with it and I just couldn't get it to work effectively so I gave up after a while, got a bit disillusioned and then I was too busy crafting the, the new parts and selling them for a profit to go away and make a, a build out of them I haven't got any of the padlock stuff, all the paints and the stickers and stuff because I'm too cheap to buy a battle pass. Well, it's less that I'm too cheap to buy it, but it's more I want to prove a point. My point being, I haven't spent a penny on Crossout. Um, my account is proof that you don't need to. You can have fun and get whatever weapons you want without spending a penny. Because it really grinds my gears when people whine that this game is too expensive. It's, oh, you don't need to spend a penny. Look at my account. It's proof. I'm making this video for posterity because I wanted to see how far you can get in a season, how many levels you can achieve because I have done all of the main challenges and I've done all of the additional challenges and I've done all of the daily challenges apart from a handful I missed a few days. For the main challenges and additional challenges it doesn't matter if you miss a few days because they just stack up they only show you two at a time but the rest stack up and you can complete them later as so long as you do it before the end of Syndicate, before within the next 10 hours. And the daily challenges, if you do all the daily challenges for a day, you get half a season level. So I've missed, what, three, four levels because of the number of daily challenges I've missed. 117, I think, is the limit of how many levels you can get in a season. Possibly 120, call it 120 to be on the safe side, or well, round up. Um, plus, of course, you could add another 15 levels if you went on and spent 35 euros on an elite battle pass. But that's how far you can get. Uh, why is that really, really interesting? Uh, where's the rewards? Because at the end, after level 75, every level you get, you get another 20 coins. So I could... Get another 25, 30, 39, another 3 on top of that, 42, yeah, call it 42, another 42 levels, 20 coins, 420, 840 coins, if you got a battle pass, that is, plus another 50, uh, anyway. The other thing I wanted to say about the Syndicate season is, get price corridors gone. I hate them, I would have made so much coin this season if it weren't for price corridors because I came into the season with large stockpiles of resources and lots of parts and I've been selling them I've been crafting the new stuff and selling it off I've been crafting the parts you need to make the new stuff and selling it off and of course resource prices have risen so I've crafted other stuff when the the amount of those parts say like the harpy cabin there haven't been very many parts on, on being offered for sale on the market, so the price and the demand's still there. So the price has been going up and and been spiking. And I've been selling on that and making a healthy profit, but I could have been making so much more because the price corridors limit how much you can offer to sell a part for. If the going price for a harpy is about ooh, 450 coins, you can offer to sell it for. 470 whereas before price corridors came along you could sell it for whatever you felt like 
And so when you saw a demand coming and no supply, you could put your copy of the part on for 150% of the crafting cost, 200% of the crafting cost. And if no one else was selling at a cheaper price and the demand was there, sometimes you'd sell. Sometimes you wouldn't, but no, you still got the part, you haven't lost anything. But sometimes you'd make an absolute fortune selling the part because no one else was selling it any cheaper. And you can't do that anymore. You've got to, to to make money crafting parts with the price crawlers in place. You have to come on once the price has gone up. I mean, it has to have a sustained demand and lack of supply to push the price up to a spike. It's a very gradual, whereas before it's very sharp uh, price rise. And then you've got to come on and put your your the part you want to sell on at the price you're willing to sell. Whereas before you could just bung it on whatever value in the hope that it might sell and it might not. But yeah, so instead of making a huge pile of coin, I've made just a modest amount of coin. I've just, this is all the stuff I've sold off, 100,000 coins worth. I mean, that's not all profit. I haven't bought back my resources yet, all the parts yet, which I intend to do, well, as soon as the resource prices come down again. Bit of a gamble, but it's a way to make money. Make coin, rather. Excuse me. And so it's been, it really has been hacking me off. And the other people it must be hacking off are all those people who went and bought a battle pass. Not a... You didn't need to... You done it again. Uh, you didn't need to buy an elite battle pass. Just a regular battle pass. 10 euros. And then there's all these padlock things. All these stickers. These... Uh, decor parts, and there's paints, where's the paint? And there's the paints, and you can get all these once you've gone up the levels course in Syndicate, you completed the challenges, and then you can sell them because they're tradable. And you could sell them for loads and loads of coin. Let's have a look at the higher, higher paint, where's the highest paint gone? That one. A thousand coins, look at that, all you have to do is get to level 72, you get your free corporate style paint because you got the battle pass and then you put it on the market and you sell it for 146,046 1, coins. Well, you put it on the market for that, but you don't sell it because of the price corridors. If we take a look at the Wacky Datty, because I've got my eye on the Wacky Datty because I've got an idea for an art racer using it and I'm going to illuminate the bottom and it'll have a glowing cup, cockpit. It'll be great. But I'm not willing to spend, well, I haven't been willing to spend hundreds and hundreds of coins on it. And it's still, it's worth, uh, what, 200, it's not worth, it's current price on the market is 255. But I put it to you that the market value of a Wacky Datty, that is what most players would willingly pay for it to get one. And we willing to sell it, the, sell one at that sort of price is about 170 coins because that's the current salvage value of a legendary decor. That's the sort of base price for decor parts, usually, until rarity drives the price up. But there's loads of these floating around, because loads of people have done the, the Syndicate season, and loads of people have got them, and loads of people have been trying to sell them. But they haven't been able to. And that's because the price corridors has limited the rate of change of the price. In previous seasons, before there were, uh, cross uh, before there were price corridors, the price of the wacky da a piece of decor like the wacky datty would drop to the market value within days. It start out really high because it's new and people are chancing. Maybe someone would be want it enough, desperate for uh, to use it in one of their builds, or they're just completely flush with coin and want to show off. Or they've been fooled, just learned a valuable lesson about the cross out marketplace. But anyway, people have bought it, and people have get the battle pass, go up the levels, get the part, put it on the uh, put it on the marketplace for you know a couple of cents less than the, the current lowest offer in order to sell theirs. And people are still trying to do it. I mean, there's 526 people still trying to do it, and I've seen, you know, a week or two ago, is like a th one and a half thousand people trying to sell. But 
the vast majority of them are frustrated. They don't sell because of the price corridors. Because here, some, someone, the price was that, 263 coins. Then someone bought, and then someone, oh, the price, I, I can, the price corridor shifted. I can undercut, and they put theirs on. And then another 29 people just went, uh, so sell it at that price. So they might have wanted to put undercut a bit, but they couldn't because the price corridor wouldn't let them. And so 29 people put it off, and, and those 29 people aren't going to sell because someone uh, someone else has come along and bought one, but it's been the first person to put an, off, an offer on for the Wacky Daddy at that price. They sold, then the price corridor shifted, and the next person came along and undercut. So all these 29 people have wasted their time. They've put it on the Wacky Daddy on the market. It's not sold. After three days, the the offer expires, and it's a waste of time for them. And they must be frustrated, because some people will, will have bought the Battle Pass in the expectation that they'll be able to sell the dyes and paints and decor parts for loads of coin. And looking at the market values of these things, it's quite a lot. And yet, they can't sell it. Because it hasn't. it's not the market value. It's not the value people are willing to buy it at. Well, most people. There's always somebody. And the price has been going down since it arrived at this sort of gradual rate. For two months it's been available. And the price is still going down. There's still people trying to sell it and undercut each other, but not many people. Well, a few more people are buying it. You can see the the rate of change has steepened a bit there because it's it come down to a more reasonable level, more closer to its market value. So yeah, I reckon price corridors are hacking off a lot of people. People who are willing to spend money on Crossout, in fact. The last people the publishers want to irritate. I've got another. I've got a question about the price of decor and paints. I've been pondering this while. I can't come up with a, a good answer. Is is this price drop going to continue at its gradual rate until it hits the market value of about 170 coins, or well, the salvage value of the wacky Daddy? Because I expect the resource prices will start dropping now the season's ending. Might take a little while, but they'll start going down. So will people still be trying to undercut each other and people will gradually be buying them so the price will go down, slow, continue to go down slowly until it hits you know, 170 coins? Or will people stop buying and selling the Wacky Daddy? Because being in the season advertises the wacky daddy part because people look people look at the rewards and go oh that's a nice part i like it. i like the look of that i'll get that and then start looking to buy it but with the season ended no one's going to see the levels no one's going to see the wacky daddy unless they go in the exhibition and or see someone in battle with it and then go oh that's a part where's that from so the number of people trying to buy the Wacky Daddy is going to drop. And then people go, oh, the price is changing even less, no one's buying, it's not worth bothering to put on sale, so they won't put on sale, and there'll be fewer and fewer trades of the Wacky Daddy. And at that point, I think it'll get the price might get normalised. Everybody's used to it being 260, around the 200, well, 200, well, it's dropped a bit there, yeah, around the 250 coins value. So that's what they think the value is, and then it becomes normalised, and that's what the market value becomes. It trades around 250 coins. Despite the fact, I would expect its market value to be around its salvage value of around 170, until rarity kicks in. You know, and a couple of years down, down the line, when the people who have the Wacky Daddy have either salvaged it, or they've stopped playing and it's just sitting in their accounts doing nothing, then the price might go up because of rarity. And I don't know which it's going to do. And I want to know because I want to know: is it worth? Do I buy it now, and then I can make my art racer with it, or is it worth waiting a bit longer? 
I don't know which, but I suspect it's going to carry on going down to market value. Well, so I'm going to wait until it hits that before I buy it, I think. You can't go around throwing away your money. I might be flush at the moment, but I want to invest that. I want to buy back loads of resources. Thank you very much. Anyway, that's enough of me whining and enough for this video. Goodbye syndicate season. Hello spring mayhem.